Hello, welcome to this demonstration of the new online recording system for Covnod. My name's Tim May, I'm the IT manager and systems developer. This is actually the third iteration of the online recording system, uh, the second of which you may be familiar with. Um, we've been using it now for well over 10 years, so it's, it's definitely time for a new version. So this is what you'll see when you first come to the website, um, a, a choice of language. The whole uh, website's been uh, translated into Welsh, fully bilingual, and so you have that choice here. We're going to go with English. So here is when you could, where you can log in using the details uh, that you have from the previous online recording system. If you've forgotten your password, we have a link down here. If you don't have an account, you can sign up. I'm just going to log in. So this is the landing page of the website. Um, you'll see down here we have a messages section. This is where this will change over time. It's where we'll um, make you aware of any new features added um, or anything else important. At the top, you'll see we have an enter records and a view records option. If I click enter records, we'll get a pop up um, with a few options. Now you'll see um, down here, we have a, a few projects we're running. This will change over time. Um, but so if you're entering records of say, hedgehogs in this case, um, or alien species, you would choose these options. Um, but generally, you would choose um, standard entry to enter ad hoc records, um, keep them all in the same place. So here's the record entry form. Um, if you're familiar with the current ORS, this shouldn't look um, too different. Um, we've tried to keep things similar. Um, we've moved a couple of fields around uh, to make things hopefully simpler, um, and we've added a couple of new features which I'll explain as we go through. So the first field is species name. Uh, the main difference um, from the previous version of the ORS is that you no longer have to choose a species group before you start entering the name. So I could enter a species name which I know occurs in several species groups, and once they've found the results you'll have the option to choose. So I could say well actually I was only interested in the birds, I was only interested in the flank plant or the moss. Now you'll see at the bottom here, um, the scarce red shank um, has this tag infrequently recorded. Now this is a little subjective, but it uh, basically indicates that we do not hold many records of this um, species in our database. So if you're, um, if you're not sure of the identity of the species, then it's likely that this wasn't it, unless you're an expert in it. That, um, that said, you know, it's not infallible. So uh, if you're absolutely certain that's what it was, then there's absolutely no problem selecting that. It's just a little warning. Um, we have uh, the ability to enter records uh, in Welsh. If you have Welsh names, um, and I'm going to just choose this one for demonstration purposes. Okay, the next uh, field is the confidence level which, as it says, um, is your confidence in your identification of the species, how confident you were that that is what it is. If you're pretty certain that's what it was, you might choose four stars. If you're absolutely convinced, no doubt whatsoever that that's what it was, you would choose five stars. Now, this um, here is a new field identified by app. Because of the proliferation of various um, image recognition, and audio recognition apps out there, like Google Lens, things like that, um, we feel it's important that local experts are made uh, aware that um, your idea of the species was made by an app. So that's absolutely fine, um, but it's uh, it's just something that we think uh, people should be made aware of. Next field, abundance, uh, the number of individuals you saw. So I might say, okay, I saw one male, one female. Now these, um, what we call abundance qualifiers, are related to the species you've chosen, or the species group more accurately. So all of these are applicable potentially to mammals. So I could, so if you chose a different species group, you would have a different set of options for this. So I'm gonna say there is one male, and that has another abundance, and one female. Okay, next field, um, attachments. Now we really recommend people upload a photo of the species if they can. Um, most people have a, a mobile phone on these days, very easy to take a photo of, of particularly plant species, things like that. Um, and it really helps local experts um, to verify your records. So I'm gonna click upload a file and choose uh, this uh, wildcat 
picture I prepared earlier. And you'll see this now has found some inf additional information in that photo. Um, obviously, because uh, it's taken with a, a modern camera, uh, it has a date that it was taken, which we can use for the record. Um, likely, if it was taken on a mobile phone, it will have some location information associated with it, which uh, we take and create a, a six figure grid reference out of it. Now you can choose to use either of these fields. You can use them all or you can choose to uh, ignore it completely. In this instance, we're going to say use all. And you'll see down here, um, the grid reference has been populated as has the date. Now we have here uh, a few advanced options. We have um, a set as negative record option, um, which on the whole you won't use. Um, a negative record indicates that you were actively looking for a particular species but didn't find it, um, probably as part of some some organized survey or other. Um, you can add a record type, um, which would be, again, related to mammals here. Um, so I can say it was a live sighting. And you have the option of a sampling method. Now, there aren't many sampling methods for mammals. Uh, indeed, there is just camera trap. So you could choose that if you wanted to. Now we're going to move on to the, the where um, section. So here you see the grid reference has already been populated. If it hadn't been populated, I could click on the map and, and put one in. I'm going to click on map anyway, and that will take this grid reference and plot it. So I can see that that's where the photo was taken. If I wanted to correct it, I could click elsewhere on the map and click insert grid reference, and it would, it would place that grid reference into the box. If I want to zoom in a bit further, uh, you'll see you can't zoom in any further on the OS map. Um, so we need to change to aerial photos or hybrid. So we will change to aerial photos, zoom in a bit further, and you'll see we'll be able to get there a 10 figure, or if we zoom out a bit more, uh, an eight figure grid reference. Now I'll just go through a few of the options on the map while we're here. We have a find option um, where you can enter a place name, as it says, post go to grid reference, and it will find that on the map. So you can then uh, find your grid square that way you also have the option to search uh, latitude longitude if you've been provided with that over here on the right uh, we have a zoom in zoom out buttons we have uh, this icon which as it says zooms to the area covered by uh, Covnod um, if we click this button uh, which is very useful if you're using a mobile phone or something out in the field it will use the inbuilt GPS to pinpoint your location and you can then derive a grid reference from that. This option here takes you to your postcode. So if you're entering records from home, that can be very useful. We have a, a little feature here to measure distance between two points. And this final option just shows you the grid reference at your pointer. So I'm going to insert that grid reference. And you'll see here that the grid reference type has changed to select from interactive map. Now there are various other options here um, that you can choose. Uh, it just indicates that, well, I suppose the, the quality or accuracy of that grid reference. Uh, the third op the third field, sorry, um, is the site name. Now this is something that we insist on. This is what this asterisk means. Um, and it basically just gives us a, a bit more information about where the species was. It also allows us to check grid reference against site names. So if there's any disparity, it will we'll be able to see that there's a, an issue there. So I'm just going to type in Parkminai Hanga. Now that's the sort of um, uh, of accuracy we're looking for. We wouldn't want Banga, for example. That's a bit too broad. Um, we can go a little bit more specific if you wanted to. Um, but it, every little helps. Um, what the things that aren't so useful are things like my garden, that sort of thing. Um, okay, moving on. Um, here we come to the, the who section. Um, this will be automatically populated with your name if you're using a, a standard record entry form. Um, if you're entering a record on behalf of someone else, you can enter that here. If there's another person involved, you can add another recorder in the same way that you added extra abundances. Um, if you had someone with you um, who is perhaps more of an expert 
in identifying a species, you can add a determiner. Um, if they said, yes, that's definitely what it was, you can put that information in. Okay, moving on to uh, the date, um, you have various options here. Um, we prefer a single full date, um, but you have the option of adding vague dates just uh, from a series of uh, more, from all the months, the seasons um, and the year or just a year if you want. You can also add a date range either on vague date or full date. But if I select a date and then finally we have a notes field where you can just add any other relevant information. Um, ideally concisely, um, just some, anything that you feel would be useful to the person verifying the record or for people looking at the record in the future. Um, uh, before I submit the record, I should just mention these locks. Now, when you submit the records, generally all the fields will be cleared. Um, nothing will stay. Um, so if you want to enter a series of records from perhaps the same grid reference and site name, by the same person on the same date, but perhaps the species name and abundance will change. We can lock down all these fields, and then when I submit the record, it will keep all these contents. So I'm going to click Submit Record, and um, now you'll see the reason why I chose Wildcat. Um, there are a series of uh, checks that are run against uh, rule uh, lists produced. Uh, by experts for the MBN, and they um, they provide us with some sort of information about uh, where species occur and also dates within which they occur. So certain species are unlikely to be found in the country between certain dates, and they are certain, unlikely to be found in certain 10 km squares. Now it's not infallible. The um, the data is largely uh, based on records across Britain, so in certain circumstances they are not necessarily accurate for Wales, and so that's why we have this uh, this text here saying, "Don't worry." Um, as you say, it's just another check. Um, if you're sure what you're entering is correct, then just click continue. So there we are. The record's gone in, and you'll see down here um, is my confidence. There's my attachment. If I click that. It will pop up. You can view it. Um, there's our grid reference, and again the grid reference type, site name, abundance, record type, sample method, sampling method, and over here you'll see we have a little cog menu. Now we have the option to edit, copy, delete record. So if you've, uh, you want to make any changes, you can edit it. If you want to make a enter a similar record, you can click copy record, it will populate this ed record entry form with um, a copy of everything that you entered previously and then you can change what you want and resubmit it. We also have the option to add comments um, and this feature which was available in the previous LRS where you can manage your own labels, you can create labels and categorize your records um, yourself. You can then filter by them in the view records section um, and generally just organize things in the way that you'd like to see them. Over on the right we have a status uh, status button. Uh, if I hover over it you'll see it gives you a quick overview of, uh, of the status of the record. So this record is awaiting checks before being used and it's unassessed. Um, down here you'll see a green um, button showing that this record is being used in our database. Um, this record down here is not in use because it's been verified as probably incorrect. If I click on that status button, I get a bit more information. Um, so it'll tell us why it's not being used in our database, um, any verification information, a uh, data set information. So this is just uh, where that record is stored within our database um, and some information about designation lists that species falls on, uh, falls within. So um, it's on the UK BAP list, it's on one of the CITES lists, that sort of thing, just for information really. Okay, so uh, the Enter Records page, um, you have a certain amount of functionality, but to do, a, do more things with the records, you need to go to the View Records page, which we're going to do now. So you have a pop-up, much the same as the Enter Records pop-up. Um, 
So we're going to go with standard entry again. And you'll see here, um, this looks very similar to the other one, the, the, to the Inter Records page. Um, but you'll see here we have an option to filter using attributes of that record. So um, I could, if I wanted to filter and only view records of that species, I could view records of all mammals, I could view all records that fall within that two kilometer grid square, that sort of thing. Um, so if I were to click on this and say two km grid square, you'll see that I get five records back which fall within the same tetrad. Over here, um, you'll see we have various filter options. Because we're now filtering, we have the option to clear those filters and go back to what we were looking at. If I click filters, this shows that filter that's just been applied. We have the option to apply more complex filters um, if you want. Um, we also have a, a load of quick filters here. Um, so you could, if you wanted to do rec uh, view all records entered in the last month, you could view all records which have been verified as correct or incorrect, in fact. Um, you then have various other options just to quickly filter your view of the records for various purposes. Now in this tools, method, uh, beg pardon, tools menu up here, um, you'll see we have various options. We can map the, rec map the filtered records, um, map ticked records. If I were to tick these boxes on the left, you'll be able to um, just view those on the map. Again, tick them, label them, um, and we can view a species list, which is what I'll do first. So this looks at all the filtered records and pulls back a little summary that will give you the species name and the total number of records. And this will work over obviously a much larger list, um, giving a good overview of what you've got recorded. Uh, what will we look at now? Um, mapping the filtered records. So if I click map filtered records, you'll see we now get this mapping options box appearing over the top of the map. So by default, um, we when you're displaying multiple records, we don't display records which um, have been verified as incorrect. However, you may want to show them. Um, we also hide negative records which are displayed with a little minus sign and sen uh, sensitive records are shown. They're displayed with an uh, exclamation mark. So I've turned all of those on to display all records and we're going to continue to the map. And you'll see here we have all our records. So here is our, our wildcat, an otter and our badgers. If I click on one of these, it will give us some summary information of that species at that grid reference. Um, and if I want to, I can change to display them as the grid square rather than the point which is at the centre of the grid square. If I close this, we now have the option um, to export records. So if I wanted to export these records to a, an Excel spreadsheet, I can do this. Now you'll see here there's um, various things we'd uh, like you to read, um, nothing too terrifying, but it, we basically just ask that you don't pass on downloaded records unless they are your own records um, and that you don't change them without letting us know about the changes so that we don't end up with, with, with um, two versions of slightly different records. Um, next we have some terms and conditions which you can quickly read through, tick the box and continue. Now here we have um, options for download. We can either download all records or we can download records which have been added or changed since a previous download. As we haven't downloaded anything previously, we don't need to select these, but it means that you can download an incremental set of records if you down, um, so you can add them to an existing database, that sort of thing. Um, so we're going to go with all records. Here's um, a, a label you can apply. So when you export, as I was saying about previous uh, records changed since previous download, you can add a label so that you can easily identify that. Um, so you could write July download or something like that, and it will be easier to choose from the list. Down here, we have uh, a couple of options, which should hopefully be self-explanatory. Um, and then you would click the export button and down comes your Excel spreadsheet. 
And that is about it, really, for a whistle-stop tour of the new OOS. Um, obviously, there's a lot more functionality that is available, and we will be developing the system for, for quite some time. Um, if you have any trouble using it, please don't hesitate to get in touch, um, or if you have any recommendations for ways in which it could be improved. Um, but anyway, thank you for listening, um, and enjoy using it.